আচ্ছা আজকে হচ্ছে জিআই এর একদম কনক্লুডিং ক্লাস একটা সো ওই জায়গাগুলো করাবো যেগুলো মোস্টলি एग्जामে क्वेश्चन করে এক্সপ্লেন হোয়াই পার্ট আর ডিফিকাল্ট টপিকস এই ইনক্লুডিং অল দা মডিউলস তো একটা করে क्वेश्चन লিখে যাব এন্ড দেন আই উইল এক্সপ্লেন সো সাইমালটেনিয়াসলি ইউ ক্যান টেক নোটস মোস্ট অফ দিস क्वेश्चंस हैव কাম ইন प्रीवियस ইয়ার্স ইন দা এক্সপ্লেন হোয়াই গ্রুপ 4 তার মধ্যে মোস্ট মোস্ট অফ देम हैव কাম বেসিক্যালি let's start salivary secretion is increased after the nerve to salivary gland is cut karo kono idea ache eta niye keno hocche we might have a feel na the nerve to salivary gland is cut so saliva secretion should go down but that's not happening why this is what is the reason bolo bolo karo kono idea thakle bolo local jore bolbe local তাহলে এটা পরীক্ষা আসলে উল্টো পাল্টা লিখতে এতদিন ডেফিনেটলি লেটস আনসার এটার রিজন হচ্ছে ডিনারভেশন হাইপার সেনসিটিভিটি ডিনারভেশন হাইপার সেনসিটিভিটি এই টার্মটা ইট ইজ রিকোয়ার্ড এটা দেখলেই মোস্ট অফ দা টাইম আরো যা যা ব্লা 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 লিখেছো তার মধ্যে ডিনারভেশন হাইপার সেনসিটিভিটি ইফ আই সি আই উইল গিভ 4 আউট অফ 5 সিম্পল এই টার্মটা লাগবে এন্ড ইফ ইউ ক্যান এক্সপ্লেইন হাউ দ্যাট ইজ হ্যাপেনিং দেন ইউ উইল বি গেটিং আ ফুল মার্কস denervation hypersensitivity what is that the name suggests denervation means nerve is cut denervation means that hypersensitivity means nerve is cut but the end organ is hypersensitive to the neurotransmitters so any nerve supplying any end organ nerve end organ ki hote pare glands hote pare muscle hote pare kono tissue hote pare whatever blood vessel hote pare so any nerve supplying to any end organ if that is cut there are two compensatory changes first of all first jeta hoy nerve er ending theke ki ber hoy nerve works through neurotransmitters so first of all and and neurotransmitter acts kothay kaaj korche they acts on receptor these are the two things so whenever denervation happens denervation happens what is denervation nerve to end organ jekhane nerve theke beroy hocche neurotransmitter which acts on receptor who are present on the end organ now denervation means this is cut whenever this happens two things happen first of all number of receptor goes up this is known as up regulation of receptor up regulation this is the primary compensation to whatever insult has happened to the nerve it's a physiological compensation so first up regulation of receptor up regulation of receptor means number of receptors which are expressed seta bere jay seta shongkha ta bere jay phole nerve cut hole whatever neurotransmitter is still coming to that organ they are still able to function that is one reason second sensitivity of receptor sensitivity of receptor to that particular neurotransmitter increases these are the primary compensatory response to any kind of nerve injury this is known as denervation hypersensitivity ei jinish ta after a few weeks it comes down kichu shoptaho por dekha jacche eta ar hoy na and this has been found in experimental animal where a denervation by cutting the nerve is induced cord at impenny nerve ta ke katlo katar por dekha jacche initial few weeks saliva secretion ta barche then that saliva secretion is in plateau phase and after 7 to 8 weeks it starts going down so initial part the salivary secretion is up clear everybody 
denervation hypersensitivity it is the cause Achha, second question second part man denervation hypersensitivity two things are happening two things are happening one is number of receptors are increased and number and sensitivity of receptor to the neurotransmitter is increased so ei jinish ta ke bola hoy up regulation the opposite thing is down regulation bohu din dhore jodi ekta oshudh khao tar effect ta komte thake that is down regulation for a long time if you are exposed to a particular chemical receptor number goes down to onek din pore sei jinish ta ar kaaj kore na ek je kono jinish any stimulation seta jodi bohu din dhore ek stimulation thake it comes down if you give a gap again it goes up so this is up regulation and down regulation any stimulation any chemical response in our body that's the physiological way to deal with boredom you can say like that clear everybody okay next one eta likhchi na eta nijera likhe nebe why food is not going into trachea during swallowing or during swallowing why food doesn't go into trachea bojha gelo khabar ta jokhon khacchi food ta khabar er part ta keno trachea te duke jacche na this is second question why food doesn't go into trachea during swallowing tao jodi bujhte oshubidha hoy during so explain why during swallowing food doesn't go into trachea jete pare gelei ki hoy there is violent response cough response ekdom ge chole gele aspiration ar gelei there is a violent cough response kintu seta to accidental proti moment e to this is not happening correct amra je ei sokal bela jara breakfast kore esho food to trachea te jayni gele there is a severe cough response seta ekta separate jinish keno hocche na Answer is correct. Epiglottis is usually upright. Whenever I am talking, it is upright. But whenever I am eating something, that falls backwards and covers up the posterior part of the laryngeal inlet. Ha. So post larynx is the mukta roye chhe. Oi jagata ke bondo kore diche. Bondo kore diche. Epiglottis shoja chhe. Jokoni ami khachi, ita pichone dikhe gye. It is closing it down. So jader janar. just epiglottis falls backward and covers up the tracheal inlet epiglottis falls backward during swallowing and covers up the inlet into the windpipe a e just eta ki guriye piriye lekha third one i am not sure eta jano ki na short note jolinger ellison syndrome short note kono idea ache kojoner idea ache ekta trimester hoye geche kojoner idea ache eta ekjon acha thik ache what is jolinger ellison syndrome tomar ki mone hoy what is that hat tul beje ami shunte pacchi na একটা ট্রান্সলেটর কেউ বলে দাও এখানে একদম একজন মানে শব্দ এরকম ও যেটা বলছে একজন আমাকে বলো মানে আসছে না সামহাউ কানে আসে না ও যেটা বলছে সেটাই বলো নিজে বলো না তাহলে আবার অন্য ব্যাপার হচ্ছে ট্রান্সলেটর একা ও যেটা বলছে ওইটুকুই বলবে ও কি বলছে স্টমাকে গ্যাস্ট্রিন সিক্রিশন বেড়ে যায় না গ্যাস্ট্রিক সিক্রিশন বেড়ে যায় গ্যাস্ট্রিন সিক্রিশন গ্যাস্ট্রিন কোথা থেকে আসছে जी सर वेरी गुड ठीक ठाक जोलिंगर एलिसन सिंड्रोम इनक्रीज इन गैस इनक्रीज इन एच सी एल सिक्रिशन 
Excel, excessive HCL secretion leads to excessive ulceration. So, the patient will be having multiple ulceration throughout the GI tract. Duodenal ulcer thakte pare, intestinal ulcer thakte pare, gastric ulcer thakte pare, multiple places in over there because it is very harmful in excessive quantity. So, basically Jolinger Ellison syndrome is a gastrinoma. It is a condition which is known as gastrinoma, which is nothing but a G cell tumor. G cell tumor that leads to excessive secretion of gastrin and so much secretion of gastrin will lead to so much high secretion of hydrochloric acid that will lead to multiple ulceration throughout the GI tract that is it. Gastrin that is sufficient. Clear everybody? Jolingal Lisson syndrome important short note. Very important short note. Next one, Jeta Korachi, that is quite difficult to understand, and it is an intermediary concept between GI system and endocrine. Intermediary concept. Boite directly pavena. So question ta aste opare nau pare yakhon. Pre-PG level you will definitely face this kind of questions and day in and day out during practice specifically seeing diabetic patient or about diabetic pharmacology, diabetology, diabetes related pharmacology, this idea is very important. Jeta korate chole chhi. So, tarage koi ekta jini check to boost the hobe. Jeta korate chole chhi, eta namo chhi incretin effect. Incretin effect. Kyu shune chho incretin? Any idea? I have a slide that I have to do. I have to do a reference to the gas GI hormones. I have to do a slide. Gastric inhibitory peptide, GLP, glucagon linked peptide. Take a check. Glucagon linked peptide or glucagon like peptide. I have to do insulinotropic hormone. Glucagon related insulinotropic or gastric insulinotropic hormone eguloke bola no bola hoye thake coming to the function of them ki byapar eglo so what is incretin effect actually eta naam Gastrin inhibitory peptide or gastric inhibitory peptide can holo. First of all, this is gastric inhibitory peptide because when this was discovered, it was seen that at a very high dose, GIP inhibits gastrin release at a very high dose. And that definitely leads to reduction in HCL production. GIP jokon abishkar hoye chilo, very high dose GIP inhibits gastrin and subsequently as you know that that will lead to inhibition of HCL secretion, overall this will happen and ultimately digestion, absorption, everything will come to a standstill. Jodhi if we give it an in a supra physiological dose. However, in normal subsequently we have discovered that GIP action on gastrin is negligible at physiological dose. Tale body te ja GIP toiri hoche ota gastrin er upore shibhabe function korche na. Tahole e ki korche? Basically GIP ebong ei group er je hormone gulo royeche they do what one thing. First of all they increase insulin secretion from islets of Langerhans. So, they increase insulin secretion
from islets of Langerhans. Jeta pancreatic beta cell er hoyeche. That is one. Second, some of them and most of them have a variable response on glucagon, but mostly their effect is inhibitory to glucagon. So they reduce glucagon secretion. Tale if we get a hormone which increases insulin secretion and reduces glucagon secretion, what will be the net effect? Sugar ki hawe? Sugar will go down basically. Tale ekhane jeta darache. These hormones are secreted whenever our GI tract is exposed to carbohydrate and fats. So, whenever we are taking carbohydrates and fat, GIP, GLP-1, they are secreted. The moment they are secreted, they will increase the insulin level. They will reduce the glucagon level. And to some extent, they will reduce the time of gastric emptying. Tinte jodi akshate kori, that will stabilize the sugar level. Clear everybody? Mishti khelam. Mishti khawar pori shate shate, jokoni mishti ta pete jatche, stomake jatche, signaling hoche, and these things are coming out. Usually K cells take a one and one gulo cell ache, jagulo take a gulo bell. So, the moment they are coming out, what is happening? Insulin secretion increases because they are insulinotropic factors. Insulin secretion increases, glucagon secretion decreases, gastric emptying prolongs. Gastric emptying jodi quick hoy, quickly intestine chole jabe. The quicker it goes to intestine, the quicker it gets absorbed. The quicker it gets absorbed, the quicker sugar level goes high. Carbohydrate absorption, if I can slow it down, sugar level will not go high that much. Clear everybody? Similarly, if I can increase insulin, definitely sugar level will be brought down. If I can reduce glucagon, sugar level will be brought down. Clear everybody? Clear? So, these, these effect, overall this effect is known as incretin effect. What are incretins? Incretins are group of hormones. Jarmodde we have GIP, GLP-1, but these two are most important pharmacologically active molecules, regular use oil. What they do? When they, what they do? What ki korche? Oral glucose, J momente dhukche, they are increasing insulin secretion, they are reducing glucagon secretion, and they are prolonging gas or slowing down, slowing down gastric emptying. So overall effects of incretin is stabilization of sugar level or stabilization of blood sugar. Stabilization of blood sugar. So this is incretin effect. From here, it a kelly now. From here. Two more explain why questions can be asked. First of all, insulin secretion is increased more in response to oral glucose challenge rather than IV glucose channel challenge. Clear? Oral glucose, to me, mukhe glucose kele same amount of glucose, diluted form, same dilution if you give on IV intravenous. Insulin secretion barbe oral glucose therefore IV glucose e autota barbe na clear holo. Tale glucose jodi mukhe ni insulin secretion will go high. Glucose jodi same amount er glucose IV ni insulin secretion still will go up but not that much. The reason the explanation is incretin effect. Oral glucose takle ki karan ki jokoni ami ekhane glucose nici. The moment glucose goes up, islets and Langerhans chakane beta cell. Functionally active way would be shop kitu hobe. Kitu incretin effect of Hagbena. Incretin effect shop shomai intra GI. Intra GI food gele shekantake incretin effect as tre and that increases insulin level. So IV glucose challenge in ignites insulin response. Oral glucose challenge also ignites insulin response, but oral glucose channel does it more with respect to IV glucose challenge. Clear everybody? Eight act of vision important. Multiple times question ties the oral glucose increases more. Uh, insulin oral, oral glucose increases insulin secretion more compared to IV glucose. Clear everybody? This is incretin effect. Which is the reason.
second eta ekটু high level er hoye jabe but still since in continuation i i do believe that you will understand je do we use this glp1 and gip in day to day practice yes we do tar age ekta jinish bujhte hobe je glp1 and gip this incretins there is a an enzyme which is known as dpp4 this enzyme breaks down glp1 and gip what is the function of glp1 and gip reduction in blood sugar clear everybody ekhon of the clear tale jodi dpp4 ei enzyme ta kaaj kore what will happen to blood sugar it will go up eta total jinish ta eta tomader jonno more than sufficient regarding this at this point tale amra ekhon of the ki peyechi glp1 gip these are incretins which stabilizes blood glucose which are secreted whenever we are taking food clear now if we have good amount of glp and good amount of gip1 in our body in activated form then blood sugar will always be normal clear but the t half of gip and glp1 is not that high because there is someone who initially who quite quickly breaks them down tar reason ta ki seta o body ei karone diye rekheche because if this is so prolonged if the action of gip and glp is very prolonged what will happen amader ke gorur moto sara din khe jete hobe tai na otherwise what will happen sugar will fall down tumi khe jacho sugar kome jacho joto khacho sugar kome jacho that will be a very unique condition but that doesn't happen because they ini they ora ki korche initial load ta ke off kore dicche onek tam tumi mishti khele tao dekha jabe in normal patient tumi jodi ekhon 15 ta rasgulla o khao your sugar will not go that high amra jodi 15 ta rasgulla khai jara normal achi jara non diabetic tader ki 600 sugar hoy hoy na somebody is blocking that who is blocking that many many factors are there but this is also a very important factor post prandial sugar ta rise ta ke atke dicche to some extent kintu eta jodi onek khon dhore kortei thake post prandial sugar rise ta ke jodi onek khon dhore atkatei thake tahole ki hobe tahole sugar kokhono utbe na shei jonno body has made some unique advantage kichu enzyme erokom diyeche who will break them down dpp4 is such an enzyme who will break them down so sugar again goes up whatever is the body's need ei khane dutu factor cast korche ei khane dutu factor cast korche one factor is if we use something called dpp4 inhibitor if we use something that is known as dpp4 inhibitor tar function ta ki hobe glp gl gip ke it will stabilize so that means glp gip level will be high that means sugar level will be low so there is a scope that dpp4 inhibitor kind of molecule we can use in treatment of diabetes we do use सीटाग्लिप्टिन लिनाग्लिप्टिन खूब कमन जानुविया टाइप कैकटा मेडिकेशन आज सीटा जर बाड़ी से पेशेंट आज देखें कि ओषु खाचन दट भेरि कमनलि प्रेसक्राइब नाउ डेज सीटाग्लिप्टिन लिनाग्लिप्टिन विल्डाग्लिप्टिन दिज ग्लिप्टिन आर एक्चुअलि डिपिपी फोर इनहिबिटर्स एट तुम्हारे पर बचर कोश्चें क्योंकि ए बचर कोश्चन हिसाब से देवा जो डिपिपी फोर इनहिबिटर्स कैन बी यूज in treatment of diabetes explain why do jete pare do hoye jete pare tomar naam janar dorkar nei you need not know the name of the dpp4 inhibitors but how they work you should know so dpp4 inhibitors they prevent the blunting of incretin effects they prevent the blunting of incretin effects by keeping the glp and gip you know i mean stable in the environment intestinal environment clear everybody tale incretin effect abar bolchi complicated jayga gip glp1 era prothome onno bhabe abishkar hoyechilo initially dekha gechilo these are gastric inhibitory molecules karon ki korche era physiological or supra physiological level they are slowing down gastric emptying but only in supra physiological level they can reduce the hcl production later we saw that more than exocrine they have more endocrine property in the in the physiological zone 
and in the physiological zone or in the normal range what they do they blunts the effect of high carbohydrate load how they do this whenever high level of carbohydrate reaches intestine immediately they increases the secretion of insulin reduces the secretion of glucagon and slows down the gastric emptying leading to slower absorption and whatever is being, is being absorbed still insulin is breaking it down or still insulin is you know, you know bringing it down basically but the problem is they are not a very uh, you know stable molecule very quickly dpv4 dipeptidyl transferase but you just you can forget it dpv4 molecule is an enzyme which breaks it down and again sugar may go up so in diabetes treatment we can use dpv4 inhibitor which will maintain them arekta action royeche glp1 by injection or by oral there has been oral preparation also glp1 itself is used as a medicine in diabetes as a medicine in diabetes glp1 eta prothome injectable form e eschilo now we also have the oral form of glp1 analogs analogs means uh, same kind of molecules or molecules having the same pharmacological property so ekhan theke dutu jinish jana gelo glp1 ke amra use korte pari as a medicine for diabetes othoba some molecule which prevents the breakdown of glp1 and gip we can also use them and the is as the medicine of diabetes clear everybody an incretine effect can come as a short note we pore ekta dp4 ta it will only come if the question is very difficult otherwise tao ami bole rakhlam but incretine effect has appeared multiple times in the examination pore question ta easy age bolechi just will go so why stomach is not auto digested gastric mucosal barrier what else put je gulo easy question hobe tate ekta point likhle hobe na i have to answer a multiple i mean all the points you need to cover so ha huh? bicarbonate mucin anything else so next question common question but we expect a lot on this it ekdom common ekdom prothome so why stomach is not auto digested why stomach is not auto digested first of all ki ki cause ache ek hocche gastric mucosal barrier now gastric mucosal barrier it is made up of mucin it's a layer of mucin and bicarbonate where are they suppose these are the epithelial cell these are the epithelial cell this is the mucosal barrier lot of mucin and bicarbonate molecules are there then this is the lumen so if you look at the pH level definitely these cells are close to 7.4. This area pH is 7 and this area the pH is 1.5 to 2.5. This is only possible because of this mucosal barrier. This is one one understanding. Second understanding is there is tight junction. So this is a tight junction. So whatever acid is being formed, this acid is not being leaked. through the tight junction it can only go that side it cannot go in between that's the second reason tight junction third reason is trifoil peptides trifoil peptides what are these trifoil peptides are actually acid resistant peptides so acid resistant peptides these are also present in the epithelial border which is helping it resisting the low ph so ei tin charte cause aro ekta karon ache that is prostaglandin the fourth cause is prostaglandin prostaglandin 
and prostaglandin helps in secretion secretion of mucin likhe nite paro prostaglandin helps in secretion of mucin समय नष्ट कर मल्टीपलियालिकेशन परीक्षा Similarly, almost in the similar line, next question will be why pancreas is not autodigested. Same line. करन जाराई एक ता high corrosive material नहीं है deal करे pancreas deals with proteolytic enzymes. Stomach is है आज सी तुम्हारे क्या चाहिए? Stomach deals with acid. They have a chance to get autodigested and get destroyed in the way. क्या नो होते हैं ना बोलो. जोड़े बोलो तुम प्रोटोन पाम्प इनिटर आलसर एंटी आलसर थे प्रोटोन पाम्प इनिटर मैं मेन स्टे फर्मेशन एच सी एल Now, if you block that, HCl secretion will be low. If HCl secretion is low, ulcer will not be formed. That's why proton pump inhibitor is used. Names of proton pump inhibitor: omeprazole, pantoprazole, lansoprazole. Nam dio ekta ekta aste pare. You are not expected to remember all the names, but a prazole jodi nameshe shita ke, you will understand this is most likely a proton pump inhibitor. A nam ta diye jemo mitre so any medication. मेडिसिन Why pancreas is not autodigested? Huh? So basically, all the peptidase enzyme or proteolytic enzymes, which are which pancreas is liable to release or responsible uh, for secretion, synthesis and secretion, all of them are in inactive form. So inside the pancreas, inside the pancreas. All proteolytic enzymes, proteolytic enzymes, are in act. Sorry, in inactive form. Inactive precursor form. Okay. One very important molecule which keeps them inactive inside the pancreas is known as PI trypsin inhibitor. नाम तो लिखते होंगे पढ़ी करते। So who is responsible for that? That is trypsin inhibitor. So all these enzymes, <coughs> they only gets activated when they are released in intestine under the action of a particular enzyme that is known as enterokinase. 
so jokhon ei intestine aste only in intestine when it comes in contact with enterokinase the trypsin inhibitors are inactivated and active pepsin active trypsin active chymotrypsin active carboxypeptidase a everything is formed tomader ekhane oto mathay bole bolte parle bhalo volume ta barbe major thing tinte inside pancreas everything is inactive inside pancreas there is one molecule which keeps them inactive that is trypsin inhibitor and when it is outside pancreas inside the intestine then it gets activated there is somebody who is responsible for that that is enterokinase ei likhlei full mark diye dao kintu ei kotha gulo ke likhte hobe clear everybody bojha gelo tale eta why pancreas is not auto digested kokhon pancreas auto digest hoye jete pare due to multiple reason immunological hote pare infective hote pare alcohol induced hote pare bile acid induced hote pare stone induced hote pare certain toxin induced hote pare jodi pancreatitis hoy inflammation of pancreatitis that is a very dangerous thing and that can lead to very severe sepsis very severe multi system you know in involvement and death very quick rapid death that's a very dangerous thing pancreas itself get auto digested and the particle severe sepsis thrombotic condition multiple catastrophic changes might happen there are multiple known and unknown reason to that acute pancreatitis keno hoy onek shomoy dekha jay smoker alcohol multiple drugs addict tader hocche onek shomoy dekha jay kichchu korche na tobu hocche onek shomoy dekha jay je ekta stone chilo and that causes that onek shomoy dekha jay certain procedure let's let to that onek shomoy dekha jay oi procedure i abar etake bachacche it's a, it's, a, it's a little mysterious but one thing is no mystery if it happens it is deadly to ei jinish ta mathay rakha usually Uh, it's really difficult and challenging to salvage a case of acute pancreatitis sobai ki mara jay na but very high degree of mortality uh, this patients do have clear everybody and arekta sub acute form of pancreatitis is there that is chronic pancreatitis either khetre what happens either khetre usually all the time lipase might be a little high all the time mild inflammation is there inside pancreas but these patients can live long with certain problem major problem jeta hoy eder fat digestion or important eder digestion and absorption a problem hoy because pancreas is responsible for extreme variety of various enzymes digestive enzyme protein breakdown e shahajjo korche lipid breakdown e shahajjo korche so if your pancreas is chronically affected definitely you will be having malabsorption and certain other problems so on chronic pancreatitis patient the live oil with occasional flares and continuous threat of malabsorption and occasionally in endocrinal part of pancreas might also be affected leading to diabetes ei patient der khetre exocrine part to hoy in some cases endocrine part is also affected leading to diabetes so pancreatitis may lead to a multiple plethora of conditions like this okay so why pancreas is not auto digested that was the primary question but these are the secondary anecdotes that uh, i have just mentioned uh next one is dumping syndrome dumping syndrome very important uh essay porikha essay may be a little less frequent but tomader i health university te this question has come multiple times so yeah, as the name suggests somebody is dumping something onto something dumping something after gastrectomy hote pare hote pare so what is dumping syndrome o thik line e jacche ar keu bolo thik ache proper line e mona moti jacche anybody else তুমি কি বলছো বুঝছি না বাট ঠিকই হয়তো বলছো মানে শুনতে পাচ্ছি না তুমি ওই দুটো লোক দুটো লোক তো মিনিমাম লাগবে এবি আসবে না আচ্ছা এই জন্যই কি পিছনের যারা বসে ওরা কিছু বলে না ওদের ট্রান্সলেটার নেই বলে মানে জানে কিন্তু ট্রান্সলেটার নেই এই জন্য বলতে পারে না বোধহয় গুড ভেরি গুড ডাম্পিং দিন কি হচ্ছে তাতে প্রবলেমটা কি 
সেই প্রবলেম তুমি যদি ফার্স্ট ইয়ার সেকেন্ড ইয়ার না পড়ে থার্ড ইয়ারে উঠে যাও দ্যাট ইজ ডাম্পিং সিনড্রোম सेम প্রবলেম না তুমি ঠিকই বলেছো গুড ঠিক আছে আর কিছু সিট ডাউন ভালো মোটামুটি ঠিক জায়গায় তাই দুজনেই ঠিক লাইনে গেছে আই উইল লিটল বিট পলিশ ওভার এন্ড অ্যাবাউট বেসিক্যালি সো বেসিক থিং ইজ স্টমাক ইজ ভেরি ইম্পর্টেন্ট স্টমাকে কি হচ্ছে স্টমাক টেক্স 3 আওয়ার্স টু 4 আওয়ার্স অফ টাইম হোয়েভার উই আর টেকিং ফুড ইট ইজ স্টেইং ওভার देयर এন্ড গেটিং ইউ নো গেটিং ইটস প্রপার ডাইজেশন অর পার্শিয়াল ডাইজেশন হোয়াট স্টমাক ডাজ এইচসিএল দিয়ে ব্রেকডাউন হচ্ছে देयर আর সাম কাইন্ড অফ লিঙ্গুয়াল লাইফেস গ্যাস্ট্রিক লাইফেস সাম অ্যামাইলেজ হোয়েভার দিস থিংস আর ওয়ার্কিং ওভার देयर উপর থেকে ট্রিকল ডাউন করে কাজ করছে তো ইফ ইট স্টেইজ ওভার देयर ফর সাম টাইম দ্য হোল ইন্টেস্টাইন টেক্স আ লিটল গেটস আ লিটল বিট অফ টাইম suppose there is a condition where due to any reason stomach is taken away from the patient hote pare stomach e there was a tumor or cuts cancer and the patient underwent gastrectomy o jeta bolchilo je stomach ta ke kete bad diye dewa hoyeche so the patient is having esophagus a part of stomach or no stomach and then intestine so the total length is reduced and the total time of transit is also reduced because there is no stomach stomach hocche waiting hall railway station and more otherwise what will happen we'll straight away go on rail track and get up into the train and there will be a dumping so dumping a ki hoche to dumping means quick dumping of food in intestine or into intestine that's the dumping why this is happening why quick because there is no stomach or a partial stomach is lost so as this dumping is happening what is happening so intestine is getting too much food in too quick succession intestine is getting too much food in too quick succession if that happens what will happen so intestine ki hocche dumping what is dumping intestine getting too much food too quickly there will be three things first of all stomach acts as a reservoir but one ekta stretch korte pare intestine ke amra reservoir hisebe banai ni intestine is not meant for that so the moment lot of things over go over there peristalsis so there is a problem and intestine suddenly expands intestine suddenly expands that is one it act a neurological loop create kore tomader jonno more important if more carbohydrate and osmotically active substances reach its intestine too quickly osmotically active substance ki korbe it will pull water so whenever intestine is getting too much osmotically active substances within a very short succession or short period of time number one dilatation of your intestine or expansion of intestine number 2 osmotic pulling of water lot of water goes into intestine and number 3 very high rate of absorption from intestine these three things will happen so one is intestine expansion the second is osmotically osmotic swelling because lot of water goes into intestine and third is very high rate of absorption tell what will happen ta ki hocche intestine ta onek ta expand kore geche tale abdominal viscera if that expands too much venous return e ki hobe abdominal viscera expands too much means what it will take a lot of blood into it tale level of blood that is reaching to heart seta ki hobe decrease level jeta hocche decrease because more blood flow is now directed towards the abdomen and less venous return is coming to heart what will happen venous return falls down cardiac output falls down you will feel dizzy and there will be hypotension bp will fall that is point 1 second point almost similarly lot of water comes into intestine what will happen plasma volume will shrink 
what will happen cardiac output again will fall down you will again feel dizzy so immediately after taking food this patients will feel dizzy and there will be hypotension and reactive tachycardia hypotension or tachycardia hobe immediately reactive ei change gulo ashbe so the patient will come to you and say i feel dizzy after taking food i feel strange sensation in my chest and stomach and i i occasionally feel palpitation this is the early phase of dumping syndrome lot of food jai khe nicho sathe sathe three things one is expansion water accumulation inside intestine leading to hypotension low bp dizziness third point jeta ache that is rate of absorption is very high that means what will happen carbohydrate absorption will be very high glucose absorption will be very high so there will be severe hyperglycemia just after taking food second point eta mathay rakhbe severe hyperglycemia just after taking food tale first hocche hypotension and dizziness second hocche severe hyperglycemia after taking food je hyperglycemia hocche intestine incretin effects are still there all other effects are still there normal beta cell insulin response is still there because those are intact what will happen ever a pulse of insulin will come out and the patient will have a rebound hypoglycemia so karon ki slow things are not happening jodi puro through diye jay tale insulin will also get a harmonious time to act water will also get a harmonious time to you know go all over the body properly and food is also getting a proper time gradual time to pass through and getting absorbed now whenever this is not happening immediately a lot of carb being absorbed from the intestine hyperglycemia is happening body's normal response to hyperglycemia now will come back and it will come back severely more and more insulin pulse will be secreted and this insulin will suddenly drops it down the patient again have dizziness secondary dizziness or this is due to rebound hypoglycemia ei kotha gulo thakle you will get full marks ei kotha gulo jodi thake if you if we see that you have a proper chain of thought then ki bhabe sentence form korecho she gulo kichchu mathay ache na ebong mostly spelling mistakes also we do ignore at that time but if you don't have anything ami jodi khule dekhi shelly kids ei sob lekha ache definitely i will look at the beauty of the writing not the beauty of the science inside তো এই জিনিসগুলো এই রকম ভাবে যদি প্রপারলি ইউ ক্যান আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ড দিস আর্লি ডাম্পিং সিনড্রোম ওয়্যার देयर इज হাইপোটেনশন লেট ডাম্পিং সিনড্রোম देयर इज রিবাউন্ড হাইপোগ্লাইসেমিয়া বোথ টাইম দা پیشنট উইল ফিল ডিজি ক্লিয়ার एवरीबॉडी দা রিজন অফ ডাম্পিং সিনড্রোম স্টমাক ইজ কাট আউট অর স্টমাক ইজ নট অ্যাকটিভ ডিউ টু এনি রিজন রিজনস ইফ ইউ ক্যান্ট সে এট দিস টাইম নো প্রবলেম দা প্রসেস ইজ ইম্পর্টেন্ট ক্লিয়ার एवरीबॉडी next comes ami eta bohubar bolechi steatorrhea just ek to recapitulate kore debo because many times it has come so basic thing steatorrhea means what what does steatorrhea mean sobai jane fat in stool excess fat usual normal fat level 6 g 7 g tar theke niche thakbe in 24 hours kichu boite 5 g lekha ache whatever so 5 6 7 tar niche thakbe steatorrhea when steatorrhea happens that means excess fat is in stool that means fat absorption was somewhere deficient due to one or the other reason right so fat absorption now we need to understand how fat absorption helps or takes place and who are responsible for fat absorption one is pancreatic secretion is responsible for fat absorption and the second is bile though it doesn't have any enzyme which directly degrades fat but it still requires for fat absorption because important formation of micelle and saponification of fat and transport of fat in the micellar form throughout the aqueous medium of intestinal juice that's all the bile does so if you have some problem either in the pancreas or if you have some problem in the bile or if you have some problem in intestinal epithelial cell directly jekhane fat absorb hocche shekhane hi hocche na vilaite problem hoye ache kono ekta intestinal jagate problem hoye royeche absorptive surface point problem hoye royeche then you will be having steatorrhea so usually je gulo te steatorrhea hote pare steatorrhea je gulo te hote pare reason one it can be intestinal issue je a segment of intestine is not functioning properly a segment of intestine is infected inflamed 
छोटे <laughs> In terms of biliary issue, obstructive jaundice होले कि fat absorption है problem होता पड़े। Obstruction टक उठाए, उतने ही पड़े। The bile is not coming out properly, or proper proper bile is not coming out definitely, वही जाते पड़े। So obstruction की खबर होते पड़े। What are the causes of obstruction to biliary flow? Stones, mass, infection, stricture. जस्टिसन MGDL, if that is otherwise latent jaundice, ache, but more than two. And jaundice, what is it? Bilirubin is increased. In bilirubin, I have told you, but easier part. But still, I am recapitulating. There are two types of bilirubin. One is unconjugated bilirubin, also known as indirect bilirubin. The other is the conjugated bilirubin, or known as the direct bilirubin. Conjugation takes place by UDPGT, glucuronyl transferase, and forms BMGVDG. bilirubin monoglucuronide bilirubin diglucuronide the factor which is seen after conjugation is that aqueous solubility is achieved by bilirubin only then it can pass through the intestinal juice otherwise unconjugated bilirubin it is non aqueous soluble unconjugated bilirubin barte pare if there is some hemolysis hemoglobin breakdown kole unconjugated bilirubin barte pare conjugated bilirubin barte pare if there is some obstruction because conjugated bilirubin barche increase in conjugated bilirubin means conjugation has at least taken place increase in conjugated bilirubin means conjugation has already taken place so that means up to hepatocyte it's okay after that going out into the intestine there is some problem if hepatocyte is not functioning conjugation happens in hepatocyte if that is not working there will be no conjugation unconjugated barte and there are another process where there is a mixed picture indirect and direct unconjugated and conjugated both bilirubin might increase that happens when there is a hepatocyte damage plus obstruction very commonly seen in hepatitis tate ki hocche blood e ja toiri hocche to hocche hemoglobin breakdown ja hocche hocche unconjugated is increased because conjugation is hampered that is one reason second conjugated is also increased because conjugation is still going on but hepatocyte damage is also there so whatever was stored that is coming out and the third conjugation is still going on but due to inflammation hepatocytes are swollen leading to intracellular or pericellular obstruction so that can increase both indirect can increase direct can increase so this happens this picture is mostly seen in case of hepatitis thin browner picture you can get hemolytic jaundice tomar hepatitic ekta picture thakte pare mane mixed picture or obstructive jaundice and in obstructive jaundice you will get a pale colored stool bole diyechilam if you remember pale stool obstructive jaundice e pabe kon stercobilin is not being formed because bile is not going over there so de de i mean formation of urobilin formation of stercobilin change from bilirubin ward into bilirubin these are not happening that's why there is a pale color urine uh bilward syndrome bolechilam eta arekta jeta tomaderke porikkhar age pore jete hobe eta kichu na congenital indirect hyperbilirubinemia problem is in the up tick of bilirubin shekhane problem hole gilbert syndrome hoy and last thing that i will do today that is physiological jaundice physiological jaundice physiological jaundice very important 
और न्यूनेटल जॉन्डिस फिजियोलॉजिकल जॉन्डिस कादर होए न्यूनेट्स देर होए जॉन मेर पोर्टे के फर्स्ट वीक after birth first week usually second or third day onwards this is seen and it usually clears by first week this is physiological jaundice what is that jokhon birth is happening after that what is happening hemolysis rate of hemolysis is slightly higher because body is changing from fetal hemoglobin to adult hemoglobin slowly this transition has already taken place already taking place so first is there is a slight high level of hemolysis second is premature neonate premature infant they do not have conjugating enzymes tar phole ki hocche the proper conjugation of unconjugated bilirubin is not happening so be it hemolysis be it no hemolysis whatever normally hoto ekta hemoglobin breakdown korbe body te phole je normal bilirubin toiri hocche that is also not being conjugated in this patients kader khetre tale physiological jaundice beshi dekha jay ट्रीट करपी blue light patient ke bright blue light er niche rakha hoy and blue light will do photo isomerization photo isomerization tata ki hocche this photo isomerization will convert insoluble bilirubin to soluble photo isomer insoluble bilirubin to soluble photo isomer and the jaundice is clear so that is neonatal jaundice it is seen in premature neonates this is because slightly higher rate of hemolysis and because of absence of conjugating enzymes how we can treat we can treat by photo isomerization where conjugating enzymes need is bypass by light we change it to the soluble form that's all gi is finished okay A question may come. Write a short note on the lesser omentum. So, how to write introduction? It is a double fold or bilayer peritoneal fold, extending from the liver and uh, lesser curvature and first two centimeter of the duodenum. Attachment. Upper attachment. the in the liver fissure for the on the either side of the fissure for the floor of the fissure for the ligamentum venosum and the margin of the porta hepatis so it is more or less j shaped the attachment in the liver is j shaped so upper attachment in the liver erom bhabe likhbe hepatic attachment or attachment in the liver the floor of the on either side of the floor of the as it is a double layer so one layer second layer we usually describe in case of a lesser omentum anterior layer and posterior layer so upper attachment is the floor of the fissure for the ligamentum venosum and fissure uh, and the margin of the porta hepatis from there this double layer descent double layer descent to be attached to the lesser curvature of the stomach
and the first two centimeter of the duodenum of the duodenum this is the one layer and posteriorly it curves round and also it descend to attach to the lesser curvature on its posterior aspect so lower attachment in the lesser curvature of the stomach and first inch of the first part or 2 cm of the first part of the duodenum finished components there are two components one is the gastric components which is at from the liver to the lesser curvature of the stomach known as the hepatogastric part and another part is the duodenal part attached to the duodenum this part it is known as the hepato duodenal part so there are two components actually same but amra bhag kore nichi hepatogastric part and hepato duodenal part gelo tar pore ki likhte hobe o lekhai ache the most important jetar jonno ami bolchi not only important anatomically but also important surgically ami kintu je guli porai সেগুলি কিন্তু শুধু যে অ্যানাটমিতে পাস করবে তার জন্য নয় মানে আমি দেখেছি আগে আমি যখন পড়াতাম আমাকে আমাদের কলিগরা মানে সার্জেন বলছো this is the fissure for the ligamentum venosum in datus and this is the porta hepatis and below it is attached to the lesser curvature and look in this region in this region both the layers are continuous with each, each other dekhte parcho both the layers are continuous with each other having a free margin having a free margin it is totally free not attached to anything so it is known as the and as it is it is on the right side obviously you can easily demarcate it is on the right side so it is known as the right free margin of the lesser omentum it is known as the right free margin of the lesser omentum and this part left side after covering it it passes to the stomach anteriorly and posteriorly so it is not a free margin so it is not a free margin left side after attaching to the lesser curvature it goes to the anterior and posterior aspect of the stomach and ultimately projects to the diaphragm as a gastrosplenic and gastrophrenic ligaments so they are a right free margin it is very important surgically because behind this margin it is the anterior side it is my lesser omentum so it is anterior side it is the posterior side in posterior side just below the upper uh, border there is an opening and this is the epiploic foramen this is the epiploic foramen so surgeon can put finger through this foramen into the lesser sac because epiploic foramen is a connection or a communication aperture between the lesser sac and the greater sac can be important if there is an pass in the lesser sac it should be drained so epiplo why, why there is an pass in the lesser sac there may be so many causes infection from the stomach infection from the surrounding region there are so many causes so surgeon can explode the lesser sac through this foramen and the most important part of this eta khub bhalo kore shono is right free margin of the lesser omentum in the right free margin
there are three structures passing there are three structures passing mone rakhbe duck to the right common what is tomar liver porecho common bile duct porecho liver theke dutu duct beroy take naam hocche common hepatic duct they join together to form the uh, hepatic duct uh, this is known as the hepatic duct right hepatic duct and left hepatic duct they join together to form the common hepatic duct to form the common hepatic duct from the liver from the right lobe of the liver physiological and from the left lobe of the liver that it liver is the most important organ for secretion of bile so how the bile will come to the intestine through the duct what is the name of the duct hepatic duct on the right lobe right hepatic duct on the left lobe left hepatic duct they join together to form the common hepatic duct common hepatic duct and here there is a gall bladder here there is an gall bladder gall bladder has got also duct known as the cystic duct and cystic duct join the common hepatic duct then the common hepatic duct and when the cystic hepatic duct a cystic duct join they form very important duct common bile duct cbd common bile duct very important for very notorious for stone formation stone gallbladder hoy impaction oi jaga ta giye stone atke jay sutran common bile duct common bile duct arekta ki jay tale common bile duct ei right free margin diye bhetore dutu layer er majkhan diye pass korche ashi arekta ki jay this is the celiac trunk ami ekechi this is the left gastric artery this is the right gastric artery and this is the t artery ha huh? hepatic artery proper ei sorry common hepatic artery common hepatic artery usually ei jaga tai debe and gives a branch the gastro duodenal artery and the right gastric artery and itself courses along the right free margin as a hepatic artery proper celiac trunk er branch khub bhalo kore mone rakhbe celiac trunk er branch khub bhalo kore mone rakhbe ekdom sob shomoy jano bolte paro ei bhabe celiac trunk er branch ek din du din por por i porbe ba internet e mobile e dekhe nebe branches of the celiac trunk onek jagay kaaje lagbe kemon tale ei jaga ta jodi bhalo kore aki tale ki dekhbo ei common bile duct jacche tar pashe jacche hepatic artery proper duct to the right ei kotha ta mone rakhbe ebar kon ta right kon ta left examiner jiggesh korbe mone rakhbe duct to the right duct shobto eta right side eta left side tale duct ta shobshomoy right e thakbe kemon ঠিক পোস্টেরিয়ার টু দিস টু স্ট্রাকচারস এন্ড মোর অর লেস ইন দ্য মিডল অ্যানাদার স্ট্রাকচারস আর প্রেজেন্ট কেন আমি ডট ডট দিচ্ছি বিকজ ইট লাইজ পোস্টেরিয়ারলি দিস ইজ দ্য পোর্টাল ভেইন portal vein tale eta hocche duct common bile duct eta hocche hepatic artery proper ei tinte structure ami color ta nei ekhane ei tinte structure এই রকম ভাবে রাইট ফ্রি মার্জিনে থাকে 
এই রাইট ফ্রি মার্জিনে এই তিনটে স্ট্রাকচার থাকে কভার্ড বাই দা লেয়ারস অফ দা লেসার ওমেনটাম তাহলে এতক্ষণ পড়াচ্ছি কেন এত ইম্পর্টেন্ট দিচ্ছি কারণ ইম্পর্টেন্ট হচ্ছে সার্জেনের ব্রেড এন্ড বাটার হচ্ছে সো হোয়েদার ইট ইজ এন এন্ডোস্কোপি হোক অথবা ওপেন কোডি হোক ইটস এ গল ব্লাডার অপারেশন প্রচুর হয় এখনো কেমন কারণ আগে খুব ব্রেড এন্ড বাটার ছিল গ্যাস্ট্রিক অপারেশন স্টমাকের অপারেশন বিশাল বিশাল অপারেশন গ্যাস্ট্রো ডেডিনোস্টোমি গ্যাস্ট্রো ডেডিনোস্টোমি পাইলোরোপ্লাস্টি বিশাল বিশাল অপারেশন এন্ড বিশাল বিশাল পয়সা কিন্তু ব্যাড লাক টু দা সার্জন এই ইউরিক ড্রাগ ওমেপ্রাজল পেন্টোপ্রাজল ডেভেলপমেন্ট অফ দা অর ইনভেনশন অফ দিস ড্রাগ লোয়ার্স দিস কার্প অলমোস্ট টু দা জিরো हाउडी আমি আগেই বলেছি এটা আমার পোস্টেরিয়র এখানে কি রয়েছে ফোরামেন্টটা এপিফ্লোইক ফোরামেন আঙ্গুল ঢোকাতে পারবো অ্যান্টেরিয়ারলি আঙ্গুল ঢোকাতে পারবো এবার কোনো কারণে ব্লিডিং হচ্ছে অপারেশন করতে গিয়ে ইফ देयर इज इन ব্লিডিং সিভিয়ার ব্লিডিং হয়ে গেছে কেটে গেছে সিস্টি কার্টারি কেটে ফেলেছে সার্জেন নিয়ম হচ্ছে সুন্দরভাবে কেটে লাইজেশন করতে হয় কেটেই ফেলেছে আগেই কেটে ফেলেছে লাইজেশন করার আগে ব্লিডিং হচ্ছে ইমিডিয়েটলি ব্লিডিং স্টপ করার জন্য আমি যদি এইখানে সিস্টি কার্টারি তে ব্রাঞ্চ অফ হেপাটিক আর্টারি সিস্টি কার্টারি ইজ এ ব্রাঞ্চ অফ সিস্টি কার্টারি ইজ এ আর্টারি হুইচ সাপ্লাইজ দা গল ব্লাডার সিস্টি কার্টারি ইজ এ ব্রাঞ্চ অফ হেপাটিক আর্টারি তাহলে হেপাটিক আর্টারি যদি আমি টিপে ধরি তাহলে ব্লাড বন্ধ হয়ে যাবে তাহলে আমরা কিভাবে করি একটা আঙ্গুল এখানে একটা আঙ্গুল এপিফ্লোইক ফোরামেনে জোরে টিপে ধরলাম হেপাটিক আর্টারি বন্ধ হয়ে গেল সিস্টি কার্টারি বন্ধ হয়ে গেল অপারেশন ফিল্ডে ব্লাড চলে গেল সাফ করে বার করে নিলাম ব্লাড পরিষ্কার হয়ে গেল এবার ধীরে সুস্থে সুস্থে আর্টারিটা লাইজেশন করে অথবা স্টোন বার করতে হবে এখানে স্টোন ফিল করতে হবে আমরা এখানে হাত দিয়ে গল ব্লাডার ওই হেপাটিক ডাক্টে ফিল করতে থাকলাম স্টোনটা পেয়ে গেলাম এবার নিক করে স্টোন বার করে নিলাম সুতরাং দিস রাইট ফ্রি মার্জিন ইজ ভেরি ইম্পর্টেন্ট ফর সার্জন কেন देयर আর থ্রি ইম্পর্টেন্ট স্ট্রাকচারস পাসিং to this right free margin ki ki hepatic duct a common bile duct hepatic artery and portal vein kon ta right e kon ta left e anteriorly ek plane e thake dutu duct to the right sutran common bile duct to the right side and hepatic artery to the left side ebong pechone ebong middle e thake portal vein eta khub jigesh kor sutran ei ta amra right free margin pelam আচ্ছা আরেকটা হচ্ছে অ্যান্টেরিয়ার লেয়ার অফ দা লেসার স্যাক ইজ ডিরাইভড ফ্রম দা গ্রেটার স্যাক এন্ড পোস্টেরিয়ার লেয়ার ইজ ডিরাইভড ফ্রম দা লেসার স্যাক তো যখন আমরা লেসার স্যাক পড়াবো তখন দেখব এবার হচ্ছে নেক্সট হচ্ছে আমরা লিখলাম ইন্ট্রোডাকশন লিখলাম এক্সটেন্ড অ্যাটাচমেন্ট লিখলাম কন্টেন্টস লিখলাম আর ডেসক্রিপশন করলাম রাইট ফ্রি মার্জিন তারপরে আসবে ট্রেসিং এট দা লেসার কারভেচার ট্রেসিং যেটা বললাম সেটাই আছে covers the anterior superior surface of the stomach kalke bolechi and hangs as a at first layer of the greater omentum similarly posterior layer hangs as a second layer of the greater omentum covering the posterior surface of the stomach ami shudhu idea korchi tumra ei bhabe likhbe eta golper moto likhbe na heading debe chotto chotto tracing erom bhabe likhbe below up অ্যাটাচমেন্ট এরকম একটা প্যারাগ্রাফ লিখে ছাড়বে না 
নম্বর কম পাবে এতে যদি কমও লেখো নম্বর বেশি পাবে তারপরে হচ্ছে কন্টেন্ট কন্টেন্ট তোমরা নিজেরাই পারবে এই যে দিস ইজ দ্য রাইট ফ্রি মার্জিন কন্টেন্ট কি কি এট দ্য রাইট ফ্রি মার্জিন হোয়াট আর দ্য কন্টেন্টস অফ দ্য লেসার মোমেন্টাম এট দ্য রাইট ফ্রি মার্জিন কমন বাইল্ড আর হেপাটিক আর্টারি পোর্টাল ভেন এট দ্যাট লেসার কারভেচার দ্য রাইট গ্যাস্ট্রিক আর্টারি লেফট গ্যাস্ট্রিক আর্টারি করেসপন্ডিং ভেইনস এন্ড লিম্ফ্যাটিক ফ্লেক্সারস এন্ড নার্ভস অটোনমিক নার্ভস হয়ে গেল কন্টেন্ট আর ক্লিনিক্যাল অ্যানাটমি জাস্ট বিহাইন্ড দ্য লেসার মোমেন্টাম ফর্মস দ্য অ্যান্টেরিয়র बाउंड्री of the epiploid foramen to which the surgeon can explore the lesser sac number 2 can and it is very important for gallbladder operation to stop the bleeding due to damage of the hepatic artery or cystic artery during operation finish tale e rokom likhle tomake kothay katbo ami number to kattei parbo pach dikle pachi dite hobe amar এরপরে আচ্ছা আরেকটা যেটা নেক্সট চলে যাচ্ছি একটু কুইক যাচ্ছি দিস ইজ দা দেখো অ্যাটাচমেন্ট অফ দা লেসার ওমেন্টাম এট দা পোর্টা হেপাটিস এন্ড দা ফিচার ফর দা লিগামেন্টাম সেনোসাম এরকম ভাবে অ্যাটাচ থাকে এটা স্প্লিন এ সরি আমি ভুল বললাম আচ্ছা এরপরে এখানে নেই একটা ইম্পর্টেন্ট জিনিস কালকে একটু ইয়েতে বলেছি এটাও একটা শর্ট নোট দেয় ইউজুয়ালি কামস ইন দ্য শর্ট নোট ডি মেসেন্ট্রি ডি মেসেন্ট্রি এগেইন ইজ এ ডাবল ফোল্ড অফ পেরিটোনিয়াম হুইচ হ্যাংস দ্য জেজুনাম এন্ড ইলিয়াম फ्रॉम द পোস্টেরিয়র অ্যাবডোমিনাল ওয়াল ডি মেসেন্ট্রি ইজ এ ডাবল ফোল্ড অফ পেরিটোনিয়াম বাই হুইচ জেজুনাম and ileum hangs from the posterior abdominal wall introduction attachment d mesentery has got two two borders d mesentery has got two borders acha ei kane jara ache ei aka ta ektu practice korte paro noy bari giye practice korbe jodi dey ei mane jodi dey d mesentery short note ei khubi sohoj eta tomake aktei hobe না হলে নম্বর পাবে না इनफिरियर भेने के बाद कोथा है जॉइन करे फॉर्मेशन होए विच वर्टिब्रल लेवल की ओबे क्लास में सुने एल फाइव इगुली तो मुखे थक बैग दो बॉडी ते देखे जो इगुली मोने रखते होए एल फोरे ए इटा बाई फर्केट होए to give two branches known as the common iliac artery common iliac artery also bifurcates at the sacroiliac joint it is the sacroiliac joint into external iliac and a internal iliac artery so the 
दिस इज द एब्डोमिनल एवटा एब्डोमिनल आउटा राइट साइड में थके ना लेफ्ट साइड में थके भाटी ब्रांड लेफ्ट में थके छोभी उल्टो पालता कोटी छोभी देखो छोभी देखो बड़ी ये तो एंड राइट साइड में थके इनफिलियर भेने के बाद এইটা যদি তোমরা একবার আঁকো যদি জীবনে তোমাদের যে কোশ্চেন গুলি করলাম নিজে যেহেতু আঁকবে কোথায় বাইফারকেট করছে আর ভুলবে না তুমি নিজে যখন বাইফারকেট করছে L4 লেভেলে ইনফিরিয়র ভেনে কে আবার ফরমেশন করছে L5 লেভেলে ভালো কথা বলছি ইনফিরিয়র ভেনে কে আবার নেভার বাইফারকেট আর্টারি বাইফারকেট টু গিভ ব্রাঞ্চেস এন্ড ইনফিরিয়র ভেন জয়েন টু ফর্ম so at the uh, it's joined to form the main vein dutor modhe tofat ache artery give branches bifurcate to give branches and jokon vein likhbe the branches join to the tributaries branches bola hoy na vein er khetre bola hoy tributaries ei kotha ta khyal rakhbe vein er khetre bola hoy tributaries ar artery er khetre bola hoy branches the tributaries join to form the vein এই জিনিসগুলি খেয়াল রাখবে দা ভেন ইনফিরিয়র ভেন আর কি ব্রাঞ্চেস কমন ইলিয়াক ভেন টোটালি রং দা কমন ইলিয়াক ভেন জয়েন টু ফর্ম দা ইনফিরিয়র ভেন আর কি এইটা কিন্তু খেয়াল রাখ ভেনের ক্ষেত্রে ট্রিবুটারিজ ব্রাঞ্চগুলিকে আমরা বলি ট্রিবুটারি আর আর্টারির ক্ষেত্রে ব্রাঞ্চেস ব্রাঞ্চ আচ্ছা এটা গেল এবার কোনটা কি এটা অ্যাবডোমিনাল আয়োটা डाल भेसल गुना डाल भेसल मानी की मिनिंग गुना डाल भेसल गुना डाल भेसल मानी की what is the meaning of gonadal vessels in case of a male it is a testicular artery or testicular vein in case of a female it is a ovarian artery and ovarian female amra ekshathe bojhanor jonno gonadal vessels bolchi can testis and ovary we call it gonads so ebar hocche and this is muscle known as the somas major muscle टूचमेंट On the posterior side, 
the anaesthetic side the posterior attachment we call it a bhalo kore shono the posterior attachment of the mesentery we call root of the mesentery root and another border on which the duodenum and jejunum it covers we call it free border we call it free border so the mesentery attached to the posterior abdominal wall to its root to its root if a root of the mesentery i am describing length length of the root of the mesentery i am now describing root of the mesentery dissection class e kalke dekhechu root ta ki rokom hoy ei rokom straight it is only 6 inches kalke bolechi 6 inches koto centimeter hocche tale 15 modal 15 centimeter but duodenum and jeju, jejunum and ilium what is the total length kalke bollam 6 meters 6 meters so the free border length of the free border is 6 meter so to accommodate this small part this border is gives a folding frocker folding er moto sutrang this border is so holding and its free border length is 6 meter and fixed part on which it is attached to the posterior abdominal wall it is 6 inches 6 inches and 6 meter dutu tally korche na karon ekta inch e bolchi ekta meter e bolchi bujhbar subidhar jonno mone rakhar jonno 6 6 in the actually bolte hobe 15 cm and 6 meters kemon acha next Attachment of the root of the mesentery very important. Concerned in the the root of the mesentery has got an upper attachment and a lower attachment on which it is attached to the posterior abdominal wall. It has got a upper attachment and a lower attachment. Upper attachment and a lower attachment. Upper attachment. Upper attachment. Upper attachment. It starts from the duodenal jejunal pressure because duodenum. Kun mesentery thakena, jejunum et thake. So, where the jejunum start? From the, where the duodenum ends and jejunum start. And this part is known as the duodeno jejunal flexure. So, at the duodeno jejunal flexure, at the left side, at the level of the L2 lumbar 2 vertebra, it is very important, it is very important. Upper attachment of the root of the mesentery at the level of the L2 vertebra 1.25 cm below the transpyloric plane and 2.5 cm left to the midline. 1.8 transpyloric plane L1 diye gache. Amra jani transpyloric plane nam shune chato. Transpyloric plane 1 point jai lower border of L1. Tar 1.25 cm niche and 2.5 cm left at the level of the L2 vertebra that is the upper end of the root of the mesentery and lower end at the iliocolic flexure means where the ilium ends and colon starts, cecum starts, iliocolic flexure at the upper level of the right sacroiliac joint, sudu sacroiliac joint likle hovena. Right, Sudram Guste Bacho, the beginning on the left side and end at the right side. Beginning of the root of the mesentery is on the right left side and end at the right side, where at the level of the upper part of the right sacroiliac joint. Tarmane, it is an oblique. It is an oblique. So, root of the mesentery attached in this fashion, sorry, make a guess. 
এখান থেকে এইবারে বলবো সো হোয়াট আর দা স্ট্রাকচার যার জন্য एग्जामিনার বসে আছে খাতা দেখার জন্য হোয়াট আর দা স্ট্রাকচার ক্রস বাই দা রুট রুট অফ দা মেসেন্ট্রি অথবা ওরালি জিজ্ঞেস করবে যদি ভিসেরাটা দেয় তোমাদের আছে দিতেই পারে হোয়াট আর দা স্ট্রাকচারস অন ইটস ওয়ে ক্রস বাই দা রুট অফ দা মেসেন্ট্রি একটা একটা করে বলো ফ্রম লেফট টু রাইট সাইড কি কি বলো একজন বলো এটা কি অ্যাবডোমিনাল আরটা তারপরে ইনফিরিয়র ভেনে কেবা তারপরে রাইট গোনাডাল ভেসেল তারপরে ইউরেটার রাইট সোয়াস মেজর মাসল মুখস্থ করতে হচ্ছে এই ছবি ঢাকলেই হয়ে যাচ্ছে বইতে দেখো তাই আছে এক দিন একটা লাইনও বেশি না শুধু এই ছবিটা আঁকবে এই অ্যাবডোমিনাল আরটা ইনফিরিয়র ভেনে কেবা গোনাডাল ভেসেলস রাইট গোনাডাল ভেসেল কারণ এটা লেফট সাইড কে ক্রস করছে না কিন্তু and ureter and the swas major muscle finish what are the contents at the root it contains the superior mesenteric artery at the root superior mesenteric artery and and towards it gives genual and ileal branches autonomic plexus of nerves corresponding veins ja mone ache and and very important lymph nodes very important lymph nodes the mesentery contain 30 to 40 lymph nodes which is usually may, may be inflamed due to infection of intestinal intestine for example tuberculosis tuberculosis when there is an inflammation of the lymph node we medical term is lymph adenitis lymph adenitis you, and when these lymph nodes are enlarged we call mesenteric lymph adenitis tumi dekhbe jokhon karo tumi ultrasono abdominal usg picture dekhbe dekhbe likha thakbe mesenteric lymph node normal all othoba likha thakbe there is an 5 to 6 mesenteric lymph node enlarged othoba direct likhe thakbe mesenteric lymph adenitis where it tuberculosis সুতরাং এখন তো আমরা ভ্যাকুয়াম নয় যে মেসেন্টারি ক্লিম নোট বলতে আমরা কি বুঝি আমরা বুঝে গেলাম যে দা লিম নোটস প্রেজেন্ট ইন দা মেসেন্ট্রি আর এ ইনফ্লেমড এন লার্জ সো ইট ইজ ভিজুয়ালাইজড ইন দা আলট্রাসোনোগ্রাফি সো দিস ইজ মেসেন্টারি ক্লিম অ্যাডেনাইটিস সামটাইমস দিস লিম অ্যাডেনাইটিস বিকাম সো এন লার্জ ইট মে অবস্ট্রাক্ট দা ইন্টেস্টাইন ইন্টেস্টিনাল অবস্ট্রাকশন হতে পারে যাকে এটা দরকার নেই তাহলে শর্ট নোটস অফ লেসার ওমেন্টাম লেখা শিখলাম দা শর্ট নোটস অফ দা ডি মেসেন্টারি লেখা শিখলাম ইট ইজ ভেরি ইম্পর্টেন্ট পেরিটোনিয়াম থেকে তোমাকে এসব ট্রেসিং ফেসিং কেউ দেবে না কোশ্চেন যতই পড়ানোর দরকারও নেই শুধু একটা পিকচার আজকে আর হবে না আকাশে খাবো বাস পেরিটোনিয়ামের ডিটেইলসে যাবে না মাথা ঘুরে যাবে যেটা বলছি গেটার ওমেন্টাম শর্ট নোট হিসাবে পড়বে লেসার ওমেন্টাম শর্ট নোট হিসাবে পড়বে আর ডি মেসেন্ট্রি শর্ট নোট হিসাবে পড়বে আরেকটা শর্ট নোট হিসাবে পড়বে না জাস্ট জানার জন্য পড়বে সেটা হচ্ছে সিগময়েড মেসোকোলন সিগময়েড মেসোকোলন আমরা জানি জেডুনাম जेजुना मान इलियम लार्ज गार्ड स्टार्ट हो लार्ज गार्ड की सिकाम एसेंडिंग कलोन ट्रांसभार्स कलोन डिसेंडिंग कलोन सिगमएड कलोन रेक्टाम एंड एनाल कैन अफुईच ascending colon descending colon rectum has got no mesentery kintu transverse colon hangs by a fold of peritoneum we call it transverse mesocolon similarly sigmoid meso sigmoid colon also hanged by a fold of peritoneum which is called sigmoid mesocolon here attachment ta ki 
অনেকটা ডি মেসেন্ট্রির মতো এর একটা ফিক্স বর্ডার রয়েছে এবং এটা হচ্ছে অ্যাবডোমিনাল অ্যাওটা অ্যাবডোমিনাল অ্যাওটা ইট ডিভাইডস ইন এট দ্যাট লেভেল অফ এল4 ইট ডিভাইডস ইনটু কমন ইলিয়াক আর্টারি কমন ইলিয়াক আর্টারি লেফট কমন ইলিয়াক আর্টারি রাইট কমন ইলিয়াক আর্টারি এন্ড কমন ইলিয়াক আর্টারি এট দ্য লেভেল অফ দ্য স্যাকো ইলিয়াক জয়েন্ট ডিভাইডস ইনটু এক্সটারনাল ইলিয়াক আর্টারি এন্ড ইন্টারনাল ইলিয়াক আর্টারি দিস ইজ দ্য ইন্টারনাল ইলিয়াক আর্টারি এন্ড দিস ইজ দ্য এক্সটারনাল ইলিয়াক আর্টারি হোয়াট ইজ দ্য ফেট অফ দ্য এক্সটারনাল ইলিয়াক আর্টারি তোমরা কারণ আমাদের সময় থাকে না তো দু তিনটে বলা মানে হয়েছে ঠিক আছে ভেরি গুড না বলতে পারলে হয়ে গেল কমন কোশ্চেন জিজ্ঞেস করা হয় খুব বেশি কঠিন জিজ্ঞেস করা হয় না বারবার বলছি কোন সময় পরীক্ষায় কিন্তু আমরা একদম কঠিন জিজ্ঞেস করি না যেটার কাজে লাগবে এক্সটারনাল ইলিয়াকার কি হয় ফিমোরাল আর্টারি তোমাকে খবরদার প্যারাডিওডিনাল রিসেস এসব নিয়ে জিজ্ঞেস করবই না এগুলি গোল্ড মেডেল পরীক্ষায় এসবে জিজ্ঞেস করা হবে আর এই ব্রাঞ্চেস অফ দ্য এক্সটারনাল ইলিয়াকার ইনফ্রেপিকাস টেক ডিফার ফ্রম ইলিয়াক এরকম বলতে হয় আচ্ছা and which can be easily demarcated by a raised ridge this is the sacral 1 sacral 2 sacral 3 sacral 4 and sacral 5 mone hobe ekta kintu bhalo kore bonse dekhbe je separating ekta ridge ache the line ache sei ta dekhe amra sacral 1 sacral 2 bujhte pari kemon eta ekhane lagbe bole bolla now sigmoid mesocolon has got a again a root like the d mesentery it has got a root through which it attached to the posterior abdominal wall here in case of a lower part of the abdomen the d mesentery kete root ta chilo erokom straight but sigmoid mesocolon er kete root ta hocche inverted v shape e ei rokom the root ta hocche inverted v shape inverted v shape so it has got a left limb it has got a right limb and it has got a apex right kothay thake left limb attached onto the fibrous tissue of the external iliac artery upper part of the external iliac artery the left limb is attached to the upper part of the external iliac artery ওখানে যে আমরা জানি আউটার আউটসাইড ওয়ালে ফাইব্রাস টিস্যু আছে ওই ফাইব্রাস টিস্যুতে অ্যাটাচ হয়ে যায় and right limb attached to the sacrum obliquely up to the third sacral vertebra এই রকম 
So lay free matters to the tenuca adventitia over the external iliac artery, fibrous tissue. Artery ke cover kochi outside a fibrous tissue, amya ki bolchi, jero kam intestine peritoneum thakte pare, ar jiguli non peritoneal fibrous tissue thake. Simply artery ke treo covered by a fibrous tissue outside, thake bolchi amra tenuca adventitia. Shei kani ke left limb te lagche up to the upper part of the external iliac artery. And rightly attached to the sacrum, up on the on the left side from the sacroiliac joint to the middle of the third sacral vertebra, and apex is situated into at the upper part of the sacroiliac joint. So this is the attachment of the root of the mesocolon. From here, the sacroiliac joint which contains the sigmoid colon, which contains the Sigmoid colon. What are the branches? Sigmoidal arteries, which are the branches of the inferior mesenteric artery. But, sorry, left colic artery, and also the superior rectal artery. So these are the contents of the sigmoid colon. So then, a cota folds. So mother, Janle. It is enough. Agi bolici. So, my short note is a lesser momentum, greater momentum, R4 way. This is the liver. Stomach. Kidney. Suprarenal gland. Pancreas. Small gut. Sigmoid colon, rectum, urinary bladder, So it is the abdo anterior abdominal wall, it is a posterior abdominal wall. So this is the peritoneum, parietal layer of peritoneum. From here, parietal layer reflected to the liver, covering the liver, goes and this is the caudate lobe, and from which Again, the next Dr. Parveto, on a summa eta acta, Purikai de 
ড্রয়িং সার্জিক্যাল সেকশন আমরা মানুষটাকে এরকম করে কেটেছি কেটে এরকম ভাবে দেখছি সো ব্লু কালার দা পেরিটোনিয়াম দেখো सेम পেরিটোনিয়াম এরকম ভাবে যাচ্ছে কভারস দা অ্যান্টেরিয়র অ্যাবডোমিনাল ওয়াল দেন কভারস দা ইট ইজ দা ডায়াফ্রাম ডি ডায়াফ্রাম কভারস দা আন্ডার সারফেস অফ দা ডায়াফ্রাম এন্ড ইজ রিফ্লেক্টেড অন টু দা লিভার কভারস দা লিভার and at the margin of the caudate lobe it reflected onto the stomach and it covers the anterior superior surface of the stomach then it descends down as a first layer of the greater omentum from the first layer of the gobentum it rolls back become the fourth layer it covers the under surface or posterior surface of the transverse colon then goes to the anterior surface of the pancreas covers the pancreas then comes to the posterior abdominal wall again it goes to cover the intestine small intestine from the d mesentery then it goes to the posterior abdominal wall then it covers the again the sigmoid colon to form the sigmoid mesocolon then it reflected on the anterior and sides of the rectum eta bhalo kore shono anterior and sides of the rectum then it is reflected to the upper part of the posterior surface and superior surface of the bladder and then it continued as again come to the original position in female ki hoy ajke a time nahi hobe na oh do minute ache female do and is a blue color liquid it is the greater sac in case of a male it is a totally closed sac but in case of a female it is not closed sac it is open to the exterior next class as baki to loki ei dikta to cover hoy ni tale ei bar ei dikta ke cover kori so another layer of the lesser omentum covers the posterior surface of the stomach comes down as a second layer of the greater omentum rolls back from the third layer there it form cover the anterior surface of the transverse colon goes to the anterior border of the pancreas then covers the kidney and ultimately again goes to the diaphragm and these part jeta ei je cavity te ekechi it is the lesser sac it is the lesser sac it is the lesser sac the red mane eta ki color red red ba jai hok eta hocche lesser sac sutoram ami jeta bolechilam je greater omen lesser omentum er anterior layer derived from the greater sac blue and posterior layer derived from the lesser sac red so it is the lesser sac which lies behind the posterior surface of the stomach and also beyond it tale next class e asbo amra lesser sac poriye clinical anatomy poriye shesh so histology of tongue you know in general anatomy what are the part of tongue tongue is divided into two surfaces it has got two surfaces right which one is the dorsal surface the above one which could be seen from outside okay and below one is known as the ventral surface okay so in the dorsal surface you have to know what are the structure that are present so what is the epithelium <laughs> what is the epithelium of tongue <laughs> it is non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium okay non keratinized means where you will get non keratinized that means that tissue is soft okay not that much hard okay so here you will get the tongue is the right down tongue is the muscular organ tongue is the muscular organ made of skeletal muscle so that is skeletal muscle both intrinsic and extrinsic both type of muscle so intrinsic muscle means the origin and insertion of the muscle in that particular area remember okay extrinsic means it 
these originated from somewhere else and these inserted in that particular area. Okay, so tell me some example from the lower, uh, lower team. Who is extrinsic muscle hair? Lower team? Very good. Swas major. Because swas major originated from where? Back of our back, right? Where it inserted? Who the insert for it? Laser trochanter, laser trochanter of Freeman. So understood? So origin is somewhere else but inserted in the tongue. So in the tongue also there are numerous, suppose one is myeloglossus. Okay, myeloglossus means from mandible to tongue. Okay, from genioglossus means from genial tubercle to the tongue. And styloglossus means from styloid process to tongue. So these are the examples of extrinsic muscles. And intrinsic muscles are? There will be vertical muscle, okay, transverse muscle, numerous muscles are there, okay. And the mucous membrane consists of stratified squamous epithelium. This is very much important. You have to mention, if you are getting the slide of tongue, you have to mention that it is lined by stratified squamous epithelium, okay. And at the teeth, there are two types of papilla one is filiform, another one is fungiform, okay. So we will see. So see how, what is the origin and insertion, right? So where is, uh, it is originated, what is this? This is the mandible, okay? So if anybody will tell, tell you which one is the floor of the tongue, so you have to say here, okay? And this is the root of the tongue, okay? What is this? Here, that is the hard palate. And what is this? This is the soft palate. What is this part? Nasal pharynx. Okay, this one is the oropharynx and this is the laticopharynx. So, in between that, you can see this is the soft palate. The so soft palate could go backwards, okay, so that it is prevent, preventing any food particle to enter into the nasal pharynx. Okay, meanwhile, the sleeping <coughs> is also closing this larynx so that no food particle could enter to the larynx. Okay. So see, this is the dorsal surface of tongue. Okay. So in the dorsal surface of tongue, what you could see? What is this? This is the dorsal surface which is divided into anterior two third and posterior one third. Remember this one. Anterior two third, posterior one third. And what is in the middle? That is known as sulcus tarsus. So you could see this V shape area. You could see this line. So that is known as sulcus tarsus, and what is present at the pinpoint that is known as foramen siccum. Okay, and by these two sides there is one tonsil that is known as lingual tonsil. So I told you what is the definition of tonsil? Who will tell? Prashant. Tonsil ka definition kya hai? Who will tell? So, tonsil is nothing but aggregation of lymphoid pulses. Okay? What is the definition? Aggregation of lymphoid pulses. See, if anybody will ask, tell me the definition of appendix, it would be also same. Okay? This is the aggregation of lymphoid follicles. So, why the tonsil is important? Any kind of pathogen. Okay? It could be bacteria, virus, anything. The first thing, inflammation or infection would be shown in the where? At the tonsil. Okay. So, in between you could also see there is one sulcus, okay, which is running in the midline. So, that is known as median lingual sulcus, okay. So, these are the papilla, filiform papilla and fungiform papilla, okay. Right of the right side. see. So, number one is sarcosalic papilla. Then foliate papilla, fungiform papilla, and the filiform papilla. So where do you get filiform papilla? And the heap of tongue. Okay. And sarcosalic papilla is found at the sarcus tarsus. Okay. At the posterior one third. Okay. So in the lamina propria, what are the things? There are three types of glands. Okay, write it down in the tongue. There are three types of glands. Anterior lingual band that is mixed submucous. 
mucous glands. Anterior to third, so that is mid submucous gland. Then this one is important, non ebner's gland. Non ebner's gland, okay? Which will be found at the middle. Non ebner's gland. So that is serous. Remember, non ebner's gland is the serous in secretion, okay? And related to palate and palate papilla, the last one is the posterior gland. So that is related to the inward also. So anterior gland, non ebner's gland, and the posterior gland. These are the three types of glands that are found in the tongue. And basically, where? Basically, in the lamina propria. So here is one thing that why the tonsillitis of tongue? Have you seen anybody tonsillitis of tongue? Rare. Tongue and tonsillitis of the like Why? The uh, explanation is it's dark open into the central field. Okay. So that there is no chance of accumulation of fluid or accumulation of infection. Okay. So that's why lingual tonsillitis is rare. Equal, in the type of tonsil hair, how many type of tonsils are there? What about tonsils are in the sound? By the way, for the ball, keep your thing. What is your swing of dependency? Is correct? Get, 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 get. After the tonsil, there is a full edge. Like, key tonsil, which tonsil? So that is D tonsil. Okay, that is D tonsil. Okay, one is tuber tonsil, there is two palatine tonsils and one lingual tonsil. Okay, so total number of tonsils are six. Another one is pharyngeal tonsil. So pharyngeal and lingual are one and one, singular. Okay, but palatine and this one, uh, these are two, twin numbers. So that is making warrior's ring of defense. Just study this one. Okay, what is Waldeyer's ring of defense for tonsillitis. Okay, there you can find it out. So, who is studying headache brain? That one. Okay, so see what is this? So, we will see the slide, we will get the slide like this. If you are getting this kind of papilla, so that is known as sarcomphalate papilla. Okay, and what is this lining? First known lining epithelium is stratified squamous epithelium. Okay. And here you could see these are the gland. There are three types of gland: anterior, onibulars, and the posterior. Okay. And what are these? What are these? Can you be able three, right? So in between that, there is the presence of taste bud. Okay, there is presence of taste bud. So we will see the mucous membrane. So this dorsal surface of tongue is there. What about the mucous membrane? It is rough. Why? Because presence of lingual papilla. Papilla actually over the surface to rough. Okay, because of presence of taste part. Okay. And whereas the ventral surface, if you see the ventral surface of tongue, it is somewhat smooth and slippery. Okay. Dorsal surface is rough. Whereas mineral surface is smooth and simple. So that is the mucous membrane of the tongue. <coughs> now, this thing already we have explained, right? At the dorsal surface, there is B shaped sulfur terminal is from there, anterior two third and posterior one third. So, lingual tonsils show rounded elevations that is known as lingual tonsil lymphatic nodules in the lamina propria. So, how you will see that this is a lingual tonsil. There you will see some elevated part. Okay, just uh, behind the sulcus terminus. Okay, if you see any patient, just keep the spatula in the tongue. Okay, at that time you will examine that is small, small rounded elevation. So, that is nothing but the lingual tonsils. Remember, lingual tonsil is singular in number. Only one will get, not two. Okay, so now papilla, remember what is the definition of papilla? So, papilla and nothing but these are the irregular numerous projections on the dorsal surface of the tongue. Okay, irregular numerous.
interest projection at the dorsal surface of tongue. So, how many types are there? Filiform, thumbiform, sarcomphalic, and protein. There are four types of tendons. Okay, filiform, thumbiform, sarcomphalic, and the protein. And the definition is irregular glimmerous projection at the dorsal surface of tongue. So now you see where you get first one is the filiform papilla. How does it look like? So this is the smallest papilla. First number one is this is the smallest papilla. Epithelium is keratinized and it is sharply pointed, small and conical in shape. And what is the exception? There is no taste part. So we as a type we execute taste part is not found in whole papilla area. So should be answer to be filiform papilla. So there is no presence of taste bud. Okay. And it is found where? And remember at the tip of tongue. At the tip of tongue you get the filiform papilla. Okay. So they have shown another thing. So see how the taste bud. So in the slide you will see sarcomphalic papilla, just beside that you will get this kind of structure. Okay, these are nothing but the taste bar. Okay, and whatever the situation I am talking about on the Ebner's gland, where it will be found in between this part. Okay, these are the circular part of where you will get this kind of situation. Okay. So next one is pumpiform papilla. So then a pumpiform papilla is mushroom. It is looking like a fungus, so it is mushroom like broader, larger, taller, and cloud shaped. Okay, so that is pumpkin papilla, and it is non keratinized. It is non keratinized, and it is offered species between the filiform papilla. Remember, filiform papilla is found throughout, specifically more found in the tip of the tongue, but it is present throughout. But in between that, you are having pumpkin papilla. So how does it appear? It is looking like a mushroom or fungus. Then sarcomphalic papilla, this is the largest type of papilla. Anterior to sulcus terminalis. So these are least in number. So you could count them. What is the number of sarcomphalic papilla? 8 to 12. It is fixed. Okay, 8 to 12 number. So next one we will see. So this thing already we told. How you will see this is sarcomphalic papilla. These are characterized by deep furrows or moles. And serous connectors that brings in the gland interior serous secretion in the base of the furrow. Okay. So this is one of the characteristic of sarcomphalic papilla. And these are numerous taste buds are present. So if you are eating any food, where you get the maximum taste? Okay. Specifically salty and spicy food. Where do you want taste? At the posterior side, right? So there is the presence of sarcomphalic. Why? Because there is uh, number of taste buds is more in that area. Okay. Next one is foliate papilla. So these are only developing females. It present found around the posterior and lateral border of the. So this is this foliate are only present on the posterior and lateral border. Okay, not throughout the tongue. Posterior and lateral border. So, what would be the answer? Which one is the numerous number? Most numerous number? So, that is filiform. Throughout the tongue, you get the filiform. Okay. So, foliate would be found on the lateral and posterior side. So, this part, how it will look in the slide? It is barren shaped bodies. Embedded within the epithelium of papilla, except the filiform papilla. Okay. So it is also embedded throughout. But the upper filiform papilla, that type is but only there. So that is the exception, right? Filiform papilla does not have any taste part. So what are the type of cell? Substantibular supporting cell, taste or dustary cell, basal cell, and there is taste food. So these are the four characteristics of the taste part. So, these are the, so this is not that much important if you could remember very good. So, this is the posterior parenthia part if you see. So, this 
So there is already we have discussed there is the presence of lymphoid toxin and remember there is the absence of pilipop and amipop. So see they have shown the both type of pavilion. So first of all see pilipop. So at first the organ is keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. Okay. This is keratinized. So that's why it is now throughout it is with it. Then see amipop it is looking like a gold or the uh, mushroom like and sarcomeric papilla in between that you will get followed. Okay, and this looking like a clump shape, you will also uh, get the bone with nerves there. Okay, and if you see the base part, so in between that, the just beside the sarcomeric papilla, you will get glory numbers, so that is the base part. Okay, so this is the answer for this slide. Okay, histological pictures you have to write. Number one, pumpkin or pinnacle papilla, chronical pinnacle papilla, no case part, mushroom shape pumpkin papilla, and it is covered by stratified squamous epithelia, skeletal muscle that is running throughout the tissue. Okay, so these are the four points, just write down all the papilla. Okay, and also please mention the case part, and you have to say that it is covering stratified squamous. These are the three points definitely you have to mention. Okay. And the type of muscle is skeletal muscle. Okay. These are the four points. So we will just skip this slide. Okay. We will we'll go to the histology of. So tell me, is so figures. From where to where it is extended? Is a part of GIT. So at first we are starting from the oral cavity. From oral cavity, first part is the pharynx. What is the length of pharynx? Six centimeters. Okay, then coming the esophagus. Esophagus length is on the top. It is written or not? Follow the high esophagus length. Yeah, it is correct. It is 25 centimeters. Okay. So it is 10 inches. Not only is a figure, remember stomach is also same. Okay, and body is also the same. So these three all are about 25 centimeters. 25 centimeters is how much inches? Three inches because one inch is means what? 25 centimeters. Okay, so all are 10 inches or 25 centimeters. Right? So if you have seen the isophagus, from there DIT starts. Okay, so what will be the general line? If you do the cross section of DIT, what are the things you will get from outside to inside? Any so first line would be outside serosa. Then Muscular is the muscular is external. We call it by muscular is external. Then the next layer is muscular is internal. Submucosa. Then the next layer is submucosa. And the more uh, interior is mucosa. So tell me the serosa and peritoneum are the same. We are saying peritoneum uh, is the outer lining of this whole GIT, right? And serosa is the most outer lining of the any kind of GI tract. So is both are same or not? Why? So you want two types? Peritoneum ta two type hai. Kiki hai? Visceral or parietal. Parietal ta kutal thakke at the mouth side. Then we visceral. Can we push one in the main sensitive? Parietal. Parietal ta visceral. So it is main sensitive is parietal. So what about the visceral? Visceral peritoneum just about the serosa of any kind. 
kind of gel. Okay, remember, so GI tract zero size would be differentiated from the peritoneum because you would take it out. Okay, but this this is the lining of that particular tube outside. Okay, so write it down. The general structure of GI tract starts from esophagus to anal canal. So all are same. Okay, except for that subject. Just there is regional variation in the mucus. This throughout it is same, except for the other region, a mucus of change that happens. So, could you give some example? Cellus are already mucus are there. Mucus are forged that it is differentiated in different regions. So, could you give some example? So, the mucus are to all the other. Small intestine is one of the examples. Okay, the mucosa inner lining is different, so figures is also another important. Okay, where there is presence of glands. Second, it is affected by glands. Okay, so the GIT shows four distinct four. Number one is mucosa from inside to outside, mucosa, submucosa, muscular is external, and the fourth one is also known as adhantasia or sinus. Both are bad. Okay, most outside layer is Advantasia or Cellus. So, we have the whole layer. So, see from inside to outside how we are looking. So, first one is the epithelium. Now, tell me what would be the lining epithelium? You put the key to the epithelial lining. Okay. So, you this is the mucosa, right? This white structure is total is mucosa. So in that, see what other thing we could get first layer is the epithelium. Okay? Then we are having the lamina propria. Then we are having muscular is mucosa. So there is one type of specified muscle that are found on the mucosa, on the wall of mucosa. Right? So the key how it is the epithelium. Key of the GIT epithelium. Do you know squamous epithelium thake? Is it good? So if anybody is taking oral substance in the stomach, what will happen to the mucosa? The mucosa are lining the hole. Stratified hole? Stratified are the hole. Stratified, squamous, keratinized or non and where there is a presence of gland, we have a columnar epithelium. Okay, either columnar or tuberal epithelium. It may help. But remember, you have to mention stratified squamous epithelium. What more substance is there? Why? What more acidic substance already stomach and spicy cover touch? Why? Or mucosa or nostril? So that's why back row we keep having already stratified squamous mucosa is already there. Okay, so that there is no harm. Okay. Then the next layer is lamina propria. Lamina propria is the basement membrane, right? Then next one is muscular is mucosa. So which type of muscle will be present? Smooth muscle is not pain or the muscle is not pain? Always. Always. So I'm not nice to get us to go. Skeletal or thumb pain. Open a thicket halfway, go each and take a look. Okay, we'll come to that. Okay, so not only smooth muscles, skeletal muscle and halfway. So that would be somewhat controlled voluntarily. Okay, I'm not a power tap high, I do. It is so bad, there is propulsive effect. I'm not giving high. The thermal skeletal muscle, not only equal to this. Okay, so remember, not only, but basically it is smooth muscle. Wow, that will be pretty much high, you know, so this is a good one. Because it is acting on the smooth muscle. So, the lining is smooth muscle. So, the lining is smooth muscle. Are you happy smooth muscle? Throughout our body, are you happy? So, basically, lining epithelium of all the insulins. Okay, so the joint plane, the inflammation at that time. It is the involvement of skeletal muscles. But throughout the GI tract, urinary tract, okay, uterus, all are lying epithelium is smooth muscle. Okay. Then the next layer is 
submucous. Now, do you think the submucous of which structure is present? Submucous of which structure is present? So, there are two types of plexus. One is mesonal plexus, another one is iron patch plexus. Okay. Mesonal plexus is present? Submucous. Okay. Then also the presence of submucosal gland. Then one example is the Brunner's gland. Okay. Or mucus secreting gland. So that is the submucosal gland. Okay. Then next here is muscularis externa. Now see this muscularis externa. Okay. So it has got two layers. Inner circular, outer one. So that is the external gland. So that is the external gland. So that is the external gland. And the example is the other gland. Urinary bladder. Okay, another example is urinary bladder. Okay. Then next, the last layer is the serosa. Okay. So uh, that is also known as adhemic. So mucosa. What are the three layer you get? First one is the epithelium. First one is the epithelium. Then lamina propria. So suppose if you get any side of GIT, if you write this fundamental characteristic, at least you will get some point. Okay? Because all are same. But you have to specify the characteristic. Okay? So because the thing you have to say it is line by three type of muscle. Okay? Other uh, stomach thing you have to say mucus secreting goblet cell. If you are saying in the side, you have to say mucus cell. Okay? So you have to specify the point. So next one is lamina propria is made up of connective tissue gland and lymphoid accumulation. Okay, so not only the connective tissue, also the gland and lymphoid accumulation. Lymph comes up as that, that is the lamina propria. Okay, so easy to remember is, okay, muscular is mucosa, it is made up of smooth muscle fiber arranged in two layers, inner circular, outer longitude. Okay. And this layer, this uh, outer longitudinal layer is responsible for the movement of any gastrointestinal Okay, because you know we need to have propulsion of food. What is this called? Peristalsis. Okay, so that's why we need the skeletal muscle, longitudinal muscle. So, once a layer cut the outer longitudinal layer. Okay. So see, this is the how they have taken the specimen. So how you can see? So mucosa see the layer is okay. So most inside you are having epithelia. Then next one is lamina propria and muscular is mucosa. Then this one is the submucosa and last layer is the muscular is external. Okay. So this is the four specimen. <coughs> Now in the submucosa, what do you get? There is hydroelastic connective tissue. There is the presence of hydroelastic connective tissue. And consists of mesonal nerve plexus. Okay? And may contain gland. What is the gland called of it? One is Brunner's gland. So that is how is the duodenal. And another one is the esophagus. So what does it secret? Brunner's gland is secret for it? Yes. Okay. Can you stomach it here? Stomach acid is so fast layer and it is not a good in a way. So that's why it should be prevented by the mucus. Okay. So that is the main content gland that is esophagus and glutamate. Esophagus is here we can talk about. Dipo issue because of gland as well, so we type a gland. Again, it is mucus gland. Complexity. Huh? Complexity. No, the gland as well, that would be secreting mucus. Okay, that would be secreting mucus. So see, they have shown the layer one by one. Okay. So next one is muscular is external. So, what are the things you could see composed of two layers of smooth muscle, inner circular, outer, longitudinal, and it is responsible for peristaltic contraction. And in the esophagus, how is the muscle is present? It is 
in the long the upper part okay so they have said this longitudinal muscle could be found on the upper part okay and contains which type of flexors i bet flexors and also the parasympathetic ganglia between the two layers of muscle mm -hmm. so see this mild carry flexors and i bet flexors is the same okay don't confuse these not flexors you have got there is there But mainly for the eye width, both are same. That will be found in the muscular system. Okay, between the two layer. And also, we could see there is a presence of parasympathetic ganglia. So, what is the parasympathetic supply? Yes. We confident. We have to be confident. Okay, it is mega. Throughout whole GI tract. Parasympathetic supply by the pigs. That's very easy. So tell me sympathy. Sympathetic trunk. Sympathetic trunk. What do you call it? What do you call it? Last syllable. Mm -hmm. Abdomen already started. You have to know the nerve supply. What do you call it? What do you call it? C6 to C6 to C10. Okay, it is there in the anterior abdominal wall. Okay, so it is giving the sympathetic. Sympathetic capillary acid, which is our mother nerve, spinal nerve, right? Which nerve is sympathetic? We have got cervical, thoracic, right? Remember, sympathetic is thoracodorsal. Okay, parasympathetic is craniosacral. Do you able to remember? Parasympathetic is cranial. Write it down. Parasympathetic is craniosacral. So I do cranial. Cranial means which are the parasympathetic cranial nerve? What do we have? Parasympathetic. Write it down. Three, seven, nine, ten. Three, seven, nine, ten. So third is the. Third is the ocular motor. Then seven is the facial. Nine is the glossopharyngeal, and ten is the pelvis. Okay, so these are the four cranial nerves which are parasympathetic, and all the sacral nerves. Okay, and the sympathetic supply is by thoracodorsal. All the thoracic along with the dorsal. Okay, so this is the Sympathetic and parasympathetic supply. Okay, so see these are the different nerves. How it is present, right? So they have got it layer by layer. So where you could see the artery, which layer? Artery has been seen on the submucous. Okay, and also here you will see the lymphatics. Okay. And see this is the maxillary plexus and this is the Mandibular plexus. So the last layer is the adventitia. So adventitia of cellulite consists of loose connective tissue without peritoneum. So this is the loose connective tissue without peritoneum. So cellulite consists of peritoneum mesothelial lining over the layer of loose connective tissue. So main thing you have to remember. So which layer we have not got any connective tissue? Try to remember the importance. Then the chart can layer and move the X on their tendons. First layer, you must have seen all connective tissue, name. right? Sabhi must have seen it. Then next one, muscle will be seen, and here also you are having loose connective tissue. Okay, loose connective tissue is nothing but the pad. Okay. Okay, so that so that is about the GI tract. Now we are entering the esophagus. So esophagus is about twenty five centimeter muscular tube that extending from pancreas to stomach. This thing you know, right? So it conducts the tube food to us and liquid to the stomach. Okay. So previously I have asked, is the water is absorbed from stomach? Water absorbed from what? Stomach. 
Because I told you three part, upper one third, middle one third, and lower one third. So what are the muscle layer? So at first it is arranged in inner circular, outer long But the difference is what is the type of muscle? What type of muscle? Because upper one third is the skeletal muscle. Middle one third is the both skeletal and smooth muscle. And lower one third, as because it is extending to the stomach, it is both muscle. It's very easy to remember. Okay? Skeletal muscle, upper one third, middle leg, both are lower one third and half legs. But remember, inner circular, outer long. But we have got muscular is muscle, that is, this muscle. Just now we studied. Longitudinal muscle. Longitudinal smooth muscle. Okay? So you have to definitely elaborate this thing. Okay, in this logical picture. <laughs> so see, uh, these are the layers they have shown. Okay. So here it may be differentiated because which part you are taking according to that. Only this muscular is external. It may differentiate. Okay. So advantage here again. It is loose connective tissue without peritoneum. This thing you have already written, okay? And sinusa consists of peritoneum mesothelial lining over the layer of the loose connective tissue. Okay. So, here I have to try to This is about the how it is also known as barrier tissue figures. You can check out the key for tissue figures. You can check the key for one by one layer to be changed. We have to read this on the pathology. Okay. So here see mucosa that we got and muscular is mucosa that duplicate function. That means that is second stage stuff. What is the definition of carcinoma? That is unexplained and unexpected scale division with the involvement of this. This is the definition of carcinoma. Okay. So you could see there is the formation of new mucosa. Those of you who lower is the biggest, a continuous acid kind of bark for it. What is the key for you? Those change to right? Divide and change for it. After time, it will change for it. Now, it will be difficult to do. Okay, so this is the general mechanism of carcinoma. Okay, so derive this thing. This thing is the fundamental thing. How you have to write about the histological features. Okay, so number one is Presence of stratified squama epithelium. Presence of stratified squama epithelium. Then second one is presence of esophageal glands. Presence of esophageal glands. Which type of gland? Mucus. Mucus gland in the submucus. Then third one is thick muscularis mucosa. You could also mention which type of mucosa, which type of muscle? No. Okay. Inner longitudinal layer of smooth muscle. Inner longitudinal layer of smooth muscle. So that, that's why it is making thick muscularis mucosa. The last one is muscular is externa. You have to explain that side slide. I have not written. Okay. The upper one third, middle one third, lower one third. You have to explain. And also you have to add the serosa reference. You have to mention the most out of there is serosa or appendix. Okay. So after you do the completion of the all GIs track, we will have one example. Okay. So two slides is over. One is tongue and esophagus. We will go and see the slide. Next class we will do stomach and intestines. Okay, and last class will be the intestine and appetite. So, we will see the slide. Okay.